Today is all about that 18th century pool that pretty much went viral. Sounded like it was going. Okay, oh, there we there go. We go. <laughs> okay, yeah. The problem with the pool is that it's leaking into the pool. Well, I'm just going to take a sample, a small sample. Cheers, Cheers everybody. To the end of the 18th century pool project. I mean, literally went viral on YouTube, and we are going to talk to you today about the roller coaster of a ride that it was. That pool that I swim in almost on a daily basis, um, and I was swimming in a lot of green gunk for a while until we decided to restore it. So this is the story of the restoration in only 15 minutes? In 15 minutes, everybody, get ready, because this is exciting. But let's, 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 let's sort of rewind everything. So the 18th century pool has been a feature here at Matt Britain for hundreds of years, really. Well, and well, wait, 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 maybe since the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was over the pandemic, when we were all locked in, I needed a way to energize myself on a daily basis in order to homeschool kids. So I decided to go swimming in the 18th century pool on a daily basis, and I would do what's called two minute cold water immersion therapy. It's just straight in. It's straight in. It's so impressive, isn't it? In she goes. Are you getting that kind of warm tingling sensation? You went through what looked like a really miserable period and then suddenly something happened. Energizing she dips. Was, she was very brave, much braver than me. In the Because cold. I tried it once and within 10 seconds I had to get out of the pool so fast that I broke the ladder. Yep. But what was happening was during the pandemic and I would swim every day, it, I would come out with some green around me. We weren't able to drain our pool in 2020. And so we just left it and I kept swimming in it. And it wasn't until 2021 that we were able to drain it and clean it again, which we do every year. So I'm gonna yep. pull it up. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And then if you can just pass it to me. Okay. That's it. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. That's that bit done. Okay. Oh, sounded like it was going. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, oh, there we there go. We go. <laughs> okay, yeah. Definitely needed some help there. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing that they that they thought to run, uh, obviously, the water from the top pool under the other pool. Yeah. Now, you may be wondering how on earth my wife does that. I wonder about that every day, but it's because she's been taking her AG1. Are you going to be able to hold that? Yeah, I'm still holding she's it. She's holding it. Oh, my goodness. Still holding it. Well, she, That's right. uh, she can do that. Because still of, holding it. Because of this <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful fuel. Still holding it. Personally, I prefer, prefer to take mine sitting by the fire, oh. not consorting myself in quite that way. One well day done. do you think you're going to be able to do that? I'll give it a go. It's one scoop, once a day, every day, and I'm going to tell you why. AG1 combines nine health products working together as one, replacing your multivitamin, multiminerals, pre and probiotics, immunity support, and more. One scoop, 250 milliliters of water. It's really all you really need. AG1 is so much more than greens. AG1 gives your body digestive and gut health support, immunity support, and metabolic energy and stress support. Hooray! Each of the 75 ingredients in AG1 were hand-selected and intentionally picked to provide the most bioavailable nutrients in a manner where each ingredient works in conjunction with the whole formula. One scoop, once a day, every day. And that's exactly what I do, especially before those swims in our 18th century pool. Julie and I have made AG1 part of our daily routine, and we love that just one scoop provides a blend of core health products, including multivitamins and probiotics. So we've teamed up with Athletic Greens to provide you with a free gift offer. Click on the link in the description below to get a one year supply of vitamin D3K2 plus five AG1 travel packs completely free with your first purchase. And when it was all drained, we decided to power wash it because it was very, very dirty. But we also noticed some cracks as well. So we noticed some cracks around the pool 
but we didn't think too much of it. I continued to power wash. It was very much fun with that uh, instrument that I had there. And this is like a lot of work. We filled it back up thinking it's all going to be fine. And- But it was leaking. And so it did not hold the water. Where, no. Where's that water coming from? Well, it's think? coming from the ground. So it's, it's just ground so water coming up to the back of the wall, finding the weakest point, and you can see the damage it's done over the years. So it's created a kind of river, yeah, isn't it's, it? It's, it's following it. It's like the, a channel. The, but how, yeah. how on earth do you stop water that is coming through the side? And we kind of realised that perhaps the power washing itself had made the situation worse because while it had cleaned away a lot of the algae. It had also cleaned away a lot of the cement and the cement was holding in the water and so the pool was draining down the valley. Mm -hmm. So at that point we said, ha, maybe we need to drain the pool once again, again and really try and fix it at this stage. And at that point we were already launched with Mapperton Live and we had the wonderful support of our Mapperton Live patrons who have been really helping with the support of this part of England's heritage, but in particular, the pool. It was that support that, that made it possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you should go to patreon.com forward slash Mapton Live. Um, we'd love to see you there. It's a fantastic community, and they should be so proud of the fact that they've been able to support this project. So we brought in Andy and Andy, once the pool was drained, he was able to really uh, pinpoint every single leak in the pool. But we did have to use, in order to repair those leaks, we had to use a special type of, of sealant because it needed to be waterproof. All right, so I'm gonna go and help mix some concrete. Keep it coming, just like that, Alex. All up here? Yeah, and we're going to do a bed, a two inch bed, three inch bed. Yeah. This is how we really get it. You know, we get the customers to do the work. Yeah. And we plugged those holes. I mean, it so was an many. amazing thing. But then something really unexpected happened. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what happened? Plague of frogs. Plague of frogs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can see a real problem with this project. Frogs. Fro Toads. Frogs. Obviously painstakingly picking up frogs. Here we have a bucket full of rescued frogs. So we're going to get them into the water. I can already see a lot of uh, frogs in this pool, along with a few fish. There we go, into the pool. Heading off, a few newts as well, there we go. There were so many frogs <laughs> that I was worried that the French were going to arrive and say, we want them, frogs legs, great French delicacy. Yes, we had repaired the leaks and plugged them all in. We filled up the water and we realized, hey, this works right? It's not leaking out anymore. So that was step number one and we were very happy. But 15 years ago, there was sort of a chlorinated system. Number one, we don't have that in anymore. And number two, we didn't want to um, resuscitate that. So we brought in the pool guy, David Pagan Butler. Oh, there are too many nutrients getting into the pool. So there's phosphate coming in from soil water. Uh, getting into the pool and allowing the, the, the algae just to flourish. And I'm just wondering about having, um, uh, trying to create some floating plant islands yes. that go within the pool. So maybe we do four or five of these islands through the pool here. Well, I'm just going to take a sample, a small sample, uh, and put it in this, which goes in the uh, meter. Ten the mils. Meter mark. Yep. yep. Put that on there. Now, I'm going to put this in the device and it measures the light that gets transmitted through that. The answer is 0 0.31 milligrams per litre. Good? Is it bad? Is it? Um, no, it's not good. What's happening at the moment is that the, the, the algae is flourishing and uh, when that dies and decays, it's sinking to the bottom, making a whole load of gunk, mm -hmm. which has got no I other way of, of, of leaving the pool. And he said, right, 
What you need to put in here, this is a huge pool, I think it's one of the biggest pools he's worked on, is to create and really build from scratch floating aquatic plant islands. So we worked out that we needed about 12 of them and we used larch wood. We worked out what plants would, could thrive in this pool. So what we did was we, Raymond and I went to sort of the repair center, probably out of all the projects here at Mapperton. This is my favorite. All right. Well, Are you happy with that? I love this. Yeah. This is well, amazing. <laughs> Each of those water islands took four hours to create. We created 12 of those all by hand. And what's really quite genius about this is that we would take the plants out of their compost, their soil, get rid of all of that, put grit in and stick them back in. And the reason behind that is so that they would grow through the hessian, which we had placed at the bottom of the uh, plant islands and the roots would have to work really hard, much, much harder had they stayed in soil to find the nutrients. The water that was coming in uh, to fill the pool back up because we were losing it so much from the leaks was coming from the spring above. Exactly. So the water was coming in and it was full of nutrients. And oh. that was part of the reason because the algae was, was just having an absolute party yep. on, the, on the nutrients. And I was wasn't. Why... They were. <laughs> we built the, these uh, plant islands exactly to his specifications and we put them in, we tethered them to the sides and we needed to give it a couple of months to see what would happen. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Okay, I think it's stuck. Push. Oh! There you go. Oh, crikey. That's launch. Okay. That was fun. And lo and behold, now, when you go uh, in the pool, or when I say I go into the pool, you can literally see and feel from underneath these long, beautiful roots coming down from every single plant in every single plant island. And even as we come into the winter months with not a lot of sun, these plants are actually thriving. They're green, they're bringing up the nutrients, they're healthy. This right here, it may look like roots, but you can see, look at how, this actually is a perfect example of this, uh, this is water mint here of the water mint and you can see that the roots are attract, they're taking in the algae right here. I mean, look at that on my hand. That, those were around the roots. So they are definitely feeding um, from, uh, again, the nutrients from the pool. I mean, that is, that goes to show you that it's working. And it's wonderful to swim now in the pool where there's really no algae at all and the, the, the aquatic plants are doing the job that David said that they would do. The, and that's a natural pool. There was a brilliant moment where it was hot in the summer. The pool was clear. The planters were taking off. They were growing. And you and I had a fantastic swim together. We did. And we even celebrated with a glass of Mapperton Bubbly. Elderflower. Well, it was still bubbly. It, it may, not have been, may not have been the alcoholic sort, but it was definitely bubbly. And, um, and that was a pool party. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. To the end of the 18th century pool project. This year. Part one. <laughs> part two coming up. Okay, let me try this. Mm. Wow. That is delicious. That is somewhere in between elderflower, vinegar, and champagne. I don't taste the vinegar. Closer to the vinegar, I think. That's not. No, no, that is delicious. It is pretty good. That is delicious. I like vinegar. Victory okay, lap. victory lap, everybody. Thank you so much for all of your support during this restoration of our 18th century pool.
It's been super fun, but as Luke said, there's still lots more Wait, to go. Ah. Swim with my glass. Uh, uh, that doesn't really work, does it? It's delicious. Okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Really, the story around the restoration of this wonderful pool that is a huge feature here for the visitors that come and visit the gardens, but also it's a huge feature for me because it's where I still continue to swim in most mornings for two minutes, rain or shine, cold, snow or ice or sun. I have a feeling that people far and wide around the world are going to come and want to visit Mapperton mainly for the pool. the pool. So this is going to become a place of pilgrimage. You hear, you sure. heard it here first. <laughs> so so if you're planning a pilgrimage to the Mapperton pool, just let us know in the comments <laughs> and we'll make sure that we come out and give you a warm welcome. So thank you all so much for watching our videos and for subscribing to Matt Britain Live. If you aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. It's free to subscribe and it really helps us. All you have to do is click the button to subscribe and it's no cost to you. And once again, if you want to become a patron, please go to patreon.com forward slash Matt Live and we'd love to welcome you to our community. And that's it for now. That's See it. you in the pool.